Hey everybody, welcome to episode six of Totally Tuned In. Just as an experiment today, I'm also live streaming it on my um, Facebook profile because it's a really important topic. Sorry, I'm just trying to balance my phone. <laughs> it's a really important topic and, and I wanna reach as many people as I can. And interestingly, I've got two people on um, Hey Louise on my um, Facebook profile, my personal profile as opposed to my business page. So that's really interesting. Okay, so let's spread the love and let's share this because um, this topic just came to me this morning and um, when I was meditating actually, and yeah, I just decided to dive in as usual, feeling totally unprepared, but just trusting, tuning in and trusting that um, I'm going to be able to share this message um, powerfully. And the reason that I decided to share this uh, topic today is because this morning I noticed when I was meditating at the start, I was beating myself up. I was like, oh, and then I thought, hang on a second, self-love, self-love, self-acceptance and not, you know, judging or criticizing myself for, um, for where I was at. And so um, welcome to everybody that's, that's joining on the live stream. I'm also on my business page on uh, Be Life. Um, yeah, so, and just powerfully because, you know, I've been, uh, it's something that I practice regularly. I've given a four day workshop on, on this topic. So I was able to sw quickly switch to self-love and it's just so powerful. And I thought, gosh, you know what? People need to know about this because I believe that there's people that, that you know, it's not something we actively think about every day, is it? Like, oh, uh, what, on a scale of one to 10, where's my self-love? Am I taking care of myself, right? We take care of our teeth, we brush them in the morning, right? And at night, that's something that we consciously do. Do we consciously make space for self-love? Do we consciously make space for ourselves, for the number one person in our lives, ourselves? If we're not taking care of ourselves, if we're not uh, consciously giving space to that self-love, then um, it's a real pity because it's only when we're in that space of self-love that we can give to others and um, have an impact in this world where I really firmly believe that we're all here to do, to have that impact. Okay, so um, I made some notes as usual. <laughs> and... Um, the first thing that I remembered that I thought of is that, as usual, we are, are here. It's We're so fortunate to be here. We had a one in four billion chance of making it here. So now that we're here, let's not beat up on ourselves or reject that person that's so lucky to be alive. Let's fully appreciate. And that's what I want to share with you is... Um, you know, ways that you can do that. And also just getting curious about why it is that we don't do that. Why would we not love ourselves? Okay, so let's start with what self-love is. And I'd like you to reflect on that, just thinking about it. You know, if you've never asked yourself that, it's good to become aware of, right? Like, why do I brush my teeth in the morning? Ah, because I want my mouth to feel good and I want them to be clean and healthy. Why do I want to love myself? What is self-love? What does it mean? So, for me, it really means accepting myself and appreciating we're all so unique. So it's remembering that not to try to be somebody else, but to try, you know, my, my goal is to be me fully and to fully accept me and to show up as I am. It's much easier. It's much freer. It's tiring to try and be somebody else. So to, uh, to be fully me, that's what self-love is to me. And you know, not having, just really dropping all those shoulds, dropping all those shoulds that say, oh, I should be more, um, you know, I should be um, better at sales, I should be better at communication, I should be better at speaking, I should be better at fitness, I should be better at parenting, all those things that we tell ourselves and, um you know, that judgmental voice that just eats away at self-love instead of another way to reframe it. It doesn't mean that we, you know, there's a danger with self-love as well. I think, you know, for example, if we are, you know, really overweight and not treating our bodies well and um, eat with unhealthy, unhealthy eating habits, of course, still love, acceptance, compassion 
and also how can I, um, because I want to take care of myself, you know, how can I work on this? What do I need to do? And that's also, I think, the danger with self-love. It's not like, oh, you're fine, you know, and, and not take responsibility for um, bettering ourselves. So it's really important. That's why I call it tough self-love. You know, it's like tough love on ourselves. So um, what I really believe is that discipline and structure is really, really important. I mean, simple things like um, my daughter at the weekend, she didn't want to learn a French poem. She was like, oh, but then she did. And she felt so good that she did it. You know, it was an optional homework. And it's the same with us. It's the exact same. When we, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. But stretching outside of our comfort zone and pushing ourselves to really feel like we've accomplished something, um, that discipline, that structure can re really make a difference and is um, really important for self-love, I believe. Okay, so um, if we don't make it, just to think for a moment, if you don't make self-love a priority in your life, just think about it. If you never were to watch this or listen to this and never to really focus on it, never to pay it any attention, how would that feel? And how would it feel if you didn't, you know, make any changes in the future to nurture yourself? Just imagine for a moment what that looks like. And um, you can close your eyes if you want, just to imagine to continue to judge yourself, beat up on yourself, have way too high expectations on yourself, which by the way, when we do that, it totally cripples any chance of creativity and any chance of um, you know, achieving whatever it is that we want to achieve, it's counterproductive. So just imagine for a moment how that feels like as opposed to just setting that intention right now that from this day forward, you're consciously going to set aside time and space, give it space to um, focus on self-love and not in an egoic kind of a way, um, but really just appreciating your life and valuing um, and not making yourself wrong for however you feel. It's really important part of self-love is honoring how you feel and feeling free to um, do what you want, say what you want without fear of judgment. You know, that's really when we're fully loving ourselves, I think we completely let go of any um, oh, worrying about what other people think, right? It becomes irrelevant because we're so solid in what we feel about ourselves. Okay, so some practical tools that you can do, and then I'll give you some journaling prompts, but practical tools. And just before we start with practical tools, because I was meditating just before the um, uh, sharing this episode, and when I was meditating just for a couple of moments, so two things came up and I felt, I have felt this before actually very strongly. Um, I especially feel it towards women, a sadness comes up because I feel, I really feel sad for, there's so many amazing women and clients even that share with me, you know, that their self-esteem and their level of self-love is really low and, and that's really, really sad. So, um, if, if you're in that space, just, um, I invite you to just take some space right now to, um, Feel compassion towards yourself and um, just decide that that's going to change now. That's going to change now. And by the way, you are the one, the only one that can change that. Nobody else. It's the decision um, deciding that from now on, from this day forward, I am going to love and accept myself and be proud of myself and embrace myself as I am. That doesn't mean that you don't strive to, still towards progress and growth and uh, making the changes that you want to make in your life, but it's just radical self-acceptance for where you're at right now in this moment. So um, just take a moment for that and make that decision, and then I'll share some practical tools with you as to how you can um, do self-love basically because I think that's common as well. It's like how do I how do I love myself not knowing? So fear not that's coming. But start right now. Here's actually practical tool number one is just closing your eyes and taking a deep breath and breathing into the chest area and just deciding, just connecting with yourself. That's what I love about meditation as well. It's just connection with self. And that being able to be with yourself in that way is really important. And if you find that, if you if it feels strange or weird, question why, why on earth would it? Like what would prevent yourself from just sitting and appreciating yourself and making space for you? And you know what? Allowing anything, 
that comes up to surface because sometimes we can really numb ourselves and be carrying a lot of pain. So if that arises, just allow it. If, if tears arise, just allow it. It's okay. It's okay. It's going to pass. And um, underneath that is going to be a lot more connection and just feeling more connected with yourself, with life and uh, feeling more alive. So just allow it. Don't try to um, put it down and say, no, it's the only way I can cope. Just, um, just allow it. It's a safe space right now to um, just be with you um, with whatever comes up. And if you're in a space of just complete appreciation for yourself, then that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Okay, so practical tool number one would be that, is to just close your eyes, breathe, and just say to yourself, I love and appreciate myself exactly as I am right here, right now. I choose love for myself. Here's the second thing, a practical tool. It's a brilliant exercise, actually. It's very interesting, is to um, get a piece of paper, blank, <laughs> blank piece of paper, and down the middle of it, just draw a line, a <laughs> straight line if you can. And on, on one side, write um, the current me, the current me, the current me. I've scribbled it. but And then um, the me I strive to be or the, the me that I want to be, the me I want to be. And this is a very interesting exercise because um, get curious about uh, what comes up because the current me, you know, it could be like, oh, not fit and, um, you know, uh, low self-esteem and, you know, whatever, you know, things that judge it could be judgments about yourself in the current me, um, as opposed to the me I want to be is, you know, confident and energized and taking care of myself and, um, uh, you know, really making time for my relationships and uh, taking care of my financial situation and, um, going after my dreams and honoring that, things like that would be maybe that you want to be. And then what you do is you go through each side and think, okay, what, what can I change and what do I choose to accept? And whatever, you know, you might be rejecting yourself because, I don't know, you've got, um, you have this idea that you should look a different way and, um, and knowing that if it's, you know, if it's something from a health and fitness point of view that you can work on, then yes, hooray, go for it. And if it's something um, that you cannot, that, you know, is not, is, is a physical um, aspect that you cannot change. I don't know that you're, you're going bald or your hair is too thin or something that you know that you, something that you cannot change, then choose to accept it. Because why cause yourself unnecessary pain? Or you wish that you were taller, or you wish that you were smaller, or you wish you were a different build. For example, you know, there's so many uh, things that you might come up with. And choose to accept and fall in love with uh, that aspect of yourself. And then, you know, really be rational about this and, and, and do it in a, you know, it's good to actually do it with somebody else that, that you can trust and think about, okay, what aspects can I change of the, the me that I want to be? What can I work on, the me that I want to be? And then make a plan, make a plan uh, from a place of self-love, not from a place of in order to be accepted by others because I should be that way. It's like, what do I want for me? And that self-love as well is honoring what you want for you, not what others want for you. And that's actually, um, you know, part of, I think, uh, the agenda I, I said, um, uh, why do we reject ourselves and what can we do about that? A very large part of why we reject ourselves is because of, uh, you know, our upbringing, what was expected of us. You know, a common one is that uh, the family uh, wanted me to be a doctor, but I wanted to be an artist. And, you know, we have this, uh, we reject ourselves because we, um, there's some deep rooted belief that we're not doing what we should be doing, you know, but it's, and it's really getting clear about that and deciding to honor ourselves and what we want for ourselves. That is pure self love. Yeah. And, um, I know it's not always black and white. Um, but you know, really tuning in, being totally tuned in to what you believe, you know, am I, you know, how does this, does this feel like sacrifice and martyrdom, uh, by not following my dream, whatever it is, or, um, am I just afraid? 
And if it's just being afraid, decide to have enough self-love to, in this lifetime, go after what you truly want for you. And actually, that's where I feel sadness as well, is that there's so many women, especially but men too, that um, ignore or don't feel worthy of going after a life that lights them up, that they, they feel resigned to accepting uh, a life that's just, you know, getting through the day, basically. And wake up. That's not a life. Wake up. There is so much possibility out there. And it's just a matter of making a decision to decide enough. I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. That's your responsibility. That's your decision. This is a bit of a tough love approach that I've got into now, but it really is your responsibility. Nothing's going to change unless you make that decision that you decide, I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. And if you're thinking, oh, but such and such a person is going to, um, is not going to be happy about that. So <laughs> let them deal with it because um, remember that you're living your life for you. And also that you can be such an example for others. When you decide to step up and live the life that you really want to live for you, then um, so many others, you can inspire so many others by your courage. It does require courage, but that's where self-love comes in. And also responsibility is, you know, deciding for you know, devoting 10, 15 minutes a day. Maybe you need to devote a half an hour to it a day to doing journaling prompts that I'm going to give you so that you can consciously focus on self-love, just allowing space for that. Because the more self-love that you have, the more you're going to fight for yourself, the more you're going to fight for that life that really um, lights you up. Because life should light you up. It's there if you want it. It's just require, it requires courage and commitment. And no matter where you're at, no matter where you're at or where you feel, I'm totally stuck, um, decide not to listen to your excuses anymore because we make a lot of excuses about, um, you know, think, oh, no, that would never be possible. You totally can create whatever it is that you want to for yourself with enough drive and determination. And you get that from self-love. And deciding that uh, that you count, really. Deciding that you count. Actually, <laughs> I I like to share a quote for um, for uh, the daily episodes, and I decided to come up with my own quote today rather than grabbing a quote from somebody external. And this is the quote: "Love yourself. Decide that you count. It's your duty and responsibility because you were born." Neve K. <laughs> I'm trademarking it. It's your duty and responsibility because you were born. So decide that you count and decide to really make a difference and um, be an inspiration for the next generation as well, right? Not to just settle, basically. Because uh, the more lit up that we feel, the more of an impact that we can have on the world because we'll be passionate and excited to share that with the world. I can tell you that I'm really excited about my future because I consciously decided that I wanted to create a future that lights me up. And there's lots of exciting things coming. <laughs> Okay, so here's, uh, so going back to practical tools. So yeah, forgiveness actually is one that, you know, if you feel you can be held back because, oh, uh, I didn't, you know, because this happened or because I did this, you know, you could be holding on to some story about, I, you know, and, and denying yourself, you know, that um, gift of self-love. So give yourself permission, decide, take responsibility, give yourself permission um, to put that in the past, forgive yourself and in order that you can move on. Take responsibility for forgiving yourself because it, it serves nobody and no one. Guilt, shame, are um, there's no place for them in, in having a positive impact on the world. If you're carrying around guilt and shame, then work through it because um, it's not a positive energy to um, contribute to the world. Hey, Lillian. <laughs> okay, and Ku and Sippy as well, and Jane, welcome. Okay, so uh, seek support. That's another thing I put down as practical tools. Post-it notes with reminders. I mean, these little post-it notes, you know, if you're really making a conscious decision, a radically conscious decision, then stick post-it notes up around the house. I do it. <laughs> and uh, it's a great reminder. And just really don't care about what anybody else might think. Really don't care. Just decide. No, nope, taking care of me now. 
and uh, decide to, it's a brilliant example as well, especially if you have children, you know, you're letting them know that you're consciously taking care of yourself. You've decided that, that you count, that you're important and um, that you're going to be courageous. It does take courage. Make a decision to put yourself first. Make a decision. It's all decisions. Make a decision to stop letting others' judgment get in the way of what you do. That's a decision, your personal decision. Don't make an excuse. Don't be a cop out and say, I can't because of them. Uh -uh. Be courageous and seek support. Work through your fears. Uh, here's another good one. Devote time to self-care by a massage if you can afford it. Or even just hot baths. Or think about, you know, well, you know, how can... What can I do for me that's an act of self-love? Think about it. It could be a cup of tea and buying yourself a really nice uh, teacup. <laughs> Think about it. You know, make a list of small ways and, and large ways um, where you can um, devote time for yourself. The most common excuse is, oh, I can't afford it. But you'd be amazed how if uh, you, you can get creative, you know, you can take trips away, you know, go visit a friend you don't need to stay in a hotel you can you know just take time out for you so get creative about the ways that you can do that and the other thing i said stop making excuses as to why you don't have time for yourself just schedule it in refuse to be a victim of circumstance schedule it in decide it and that's where structure and discipline comes in you know, really, it's like, um, I think it was episode, oh yeah, it was episode one, actually. Go back and watch episode one about structure and discipline and just schedule it in your calendar. Self-love hour or self-love half an hour. Really put that in to constantly remind yourself and uh, work on yourself and nurture yourself. Okay. Decide that you're worthy of a great life. It's about worthiness as well. You know, for some reason, we've at some stage picked up a belief that we're not worthy. You might know from where and um, just get rational right now. Get clear and decide that you are worthy. You were born. We're all equal. Nobody else is more worthy. Nobody else is less worthy. If you've got somebody else on a pedestal and believing that they're more important, for example, um, get clarity on that. Decide that you were born and you are worthy, equally worthy to everybody else who was born. So here's the uh, journaling prompts that um, would be good to really reflect on, you know, decide maybe the first day you can do an hour and then every other day you can do 10 minutes, 15 minutes to just keep, uh, keep it up. So here, here it is. I find it difficult. Number one, I find it difficult to fully love myself because dot, dot, dot. Think about it. Why do you find it difficult to fully love yourself? So get curious. What's coming up? It might be from that exercise that I shared, um, you know, the, the current me and the me that I want to be. So maybe it's related to that. I find it difficult to fully love and accept myself because. So um, once you know what that is consciously, you can work on, okay, what can I do about that? Another way of uh, that, that might generate more ideas, another way of wording that I feel unworthy because. I feel unworthy because. And then look at that also and think what I want to do about that is. Number three. Oh, number three is that the way I plan to address that is. So um, whatever you answer to the first and second journaling prompt, I find it difficult to fully love myself because and I feel unworthy because. The third one is the way I plan to address that is. So go through each one of them and decide to take responsibility for um, how you're going to address that. Hey, Sophie. Hey, Anne. Welcome. Okay, the fourth journaling prompt. The way that I will feel when I fully love myself is. So imagine that whatever we turn our attention towards expands. So decide what to, decide to just spend some time in visualization or meditation and looking at that. You know, get curious about it. It can feel so foreign. It's like, God, what would that even feel like to fully love myself? For me, I did it earlier, and what came up was just radical freedom, radical freedom if I fully love myself. And just a real sense of pride for honoring myself and my dream, my vision, for um, giving myself that space in life, which we're all, all of us are entitled to. And the final journaling prompt is the way that my self-love will positively impact those close to me and the world is. So just, you know, 
this is thinking beyond yourself, thinking about for others. Wow, you know what? If I've got radical self-love and self-acceptance, my children, for example, are, are going to notice that. But not only my children, everybody, you know, friends, family, and my followers as well. Everybody is going to pick up on that. And of course, it's going to positively impact because it's going to inspire. And so think about that for you, if the way that increased self-love. That's why I say I really do believe that because we were born, it's our duty to take responsibility for this and um, so that we can contribute in the world in that way. Sometimes, you know, we overthink about, we think, gosh, you know, how, um, like, uh, why, wh why would I need to love myself? You know, why is it important? But I believe that as a member of, uh, the human race that uh, in order to serve and contribute just by fully loving ourselves we can already make a difference and have an impact okay and, and the will impact the world is the way that my self-love will impact the world is so thinking bigger vision you know for me as i was writing this and thinking about this i thought gosh it really is so important to me um to the point of okay my book is going to have a very strong focus on that and um, that can have a really great impact on the world. Imagine, you know, more people making space for self-love and more people fully valuing ourselves and honoring ourselves and letting go of how society and other people believe we should be and fully embracing how we feel, you know, tuning into that, how we feel ourselves and honoring that and going after our own dreams. Okay, so that's it in a nutshell. That's it, um, making space for self-love. If you just got on, then I really recommend you watch this from the start again and uh, just decide to make, make space for that and you'll be amazed at the changes that will happen in your personal life. So just to finish up on the three G's as usual, this is a daily practice, this is a daily show and it is... Um, a time to um, make space for gratitude, goals, and guiding affirmations. So the gratitude, the three things that you're grateful for, you can take your pen and paper and write them now. What is it that you're grateful for? If you're new to my show, then uh, that's uh, something that every day at the end we focus on writing it down because the more that you open up to gratitude and appreciation for your life, the more great things that you attract and um, the more you appreciate life, full stop. So just grabbing my pen to write mine. You know, another way of looking at, at that is what is working in my life right now is. Okay, if you're watching the recording, you can pause it and write a few more than three. Um, then the second thing is your goals. It's so powerful to write your goals every day, several times a day. Um, I've really got into a, a great habit of this book here. It's got my goals, you know, I just uh, put them as bullet points and <laughs> I've become quite, quite religious about it. You know, yesterday we were racing out the door and I just quickly scribbled my, my goals in because uh, the more that we remind ourselves of them, then the more likely that uh, they will happen. They will. The more committed we are, that when we really decide that's what we want, and we step up and do what it takes, then it will happen. So write down what your three goals are. By the way, if you've no clue, then uh, start to think about it. But also, I've got my six-week Totally Mindset Reset program that's kicked off today, actually. I'm giving the first live training in a couple of hours. The first group coaching call is on Wednesday. It's not too late to get on board. So um, let me actually uh, just put the link in for, for that. If you know what your goals are, now's the time to write them down. TMRP reset, TMRP reset, okay. So if you, uh, if you want to join us in Totally Mindset Reset program, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to, there's, dreams are going to come true, basically. That's what, that's the goal of my six-week group program is to support people, help people to get clear about what their dreams are and to help them to come true. Okay, so the third of the three Gs is guiding affirmations. And I've created some guiding affirmations for today on the topic of self-love. So 
you can come up with your own guiding affirmations that support your goals, but uh, here's, here's ones that I'm suggesting for today. I love and accept myself exactly as I am. It's important when you're saying it to really feel it, so you can close your eyes and breathe it in. I love and accept myself exactly as I am. Even if you don't yet, pretend you do, <laughs> and um, start to call that, call that reality in. I love and accept myself exactly as I am. Number two, and by the way, just to really re-emphasize that again, that doesn't mean that you don't still strive towards positive change, but it's saying, okay, this is where I'm at, and I'm excited for uh, what I'm gonna create for myself. Number two, I am so happy and grateful that I now actively work on my self-love and self-worth every single day. So we're calling in that reality. We're pretending that that's our reality already. I'm so happy and grateful that I now actively work on my self-love and self-worth every single day. Imagine the changes, the shifts that can take place for you if you make space for that. Number three, I give myself permission to be myself fully, completely, and wholeheartedly. I give myself permission. I love the power of that, giving ourselves permission to be myself fully, completely, and wholeheartedly. And then I came up with a fourth one because I remembered when I uh, shared the, um, delivered the self-love workshop in Ibiza last October um, with somebody who was really, you know, didn't want to break the rules really. And, and she came up with and wrote it on the wall. Um, I can't remember what exactly it was, but basically it was around, I follow my own rule book. Nobody else's. Make your own rules. Stop following somebody else's rule book. It's your life. Um, so decide what do you really want for you? Because the more that you honor that and go after that, the more, the less resentful you'll feel and the more whole and happy, and then you can contribute that positive energy into the world. So it's called sacred selfishness. That's what it is. Okay, guys, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do share. I think it's a really important topic. One of, well, I guess it's the most important topic, right? Suka says, I'm imperfect and I rock. I love that. I am perfectly imperfect. I'm perfectly imperfect. That's what I like to say. We all are. And it's just really um, making space for that, making space to appreciate that. And, and just, yeah, watch your world change. Watch great things happen. The more we turn our attention towards the positive. Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm going to share on tomorrow. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you know in the morning. Thank you for tuning in to Totally Tuned In. And uh, I'll see you all, those of you who are in Totally Mindset Reset Program, I'm going to see you in an hour and a half as I share our first week one live training. And if you want to get in on that, it's not too late. Go to bit.ly, TMRP Reset. Oh, sorry, I just uh, thought I had shared it. I haven't. There's the link for it. And uh, you can still join us. You can join us up to Wednesday. Um, or any day this week and play catch up if you want it's a really powerful program and you get lifetime access so you'll be uh, here for next rounds as well and everything's recorded so if you can't attend live it's not a problem um you will be a member of the facebook group where we're all supporting each other thank you and thanks louise can't wait to get started later i'm so excited too louise i really am bye everyone